Yes, remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. We're also live on your DSTV channel 279. You can join us with your views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Uh, feel free to visit any of our social media pages on Facebook and on X. Now to our very first story, and the Member of Parliament for Agona West, Cynthia Morrison, has denied rumours that she's rescinded her decision to contest as an independent candidate in this year's election. This follows viral photos in which the MP is seen together with the leader of the NPP caucus, Alexander Apenyo Markin, and other NPP legislators. She's among the four members of parliament whose seats have been declared vacant for choosing to go independent across carpets. Meanwhile, the Suhum MP Kwejo uh, Asante has also denied claims that he's reunited with a new patriotic party. Let's now go live on the phone and speak to Madame Cynthia Morrison for uh, particular details on this developing story. Thank you very much, Madame, for your time. Uh, and thanks for joining us here on News 360. Uh, your pictures have been trending on social media for the last uh, three to four hours. You were seen uh, together with the uh, NPP leader, Apenyo Markin, together with Kenny Japon, a few other uh, members of parliament. And uh, subsequently, we heard that you have rescinded your decision to go independent. Are you able to confirm this? Thank you very much. And good evening to your viewers and listeners. Um, I, I went to Parliament today. We had our caucus. And after that, we had um, a couple of meetings. I took pictures with my friends and leadership and all that. And some of them, normally we put, we put them on our platforms. I don't know who is trying to do mischief and post these pictures. I just go to the coincidence only to hear that I've been offered 50 million CDs to step down. And it's all over the place. And nothing like that has happened. Well, I, I must, I must tell that, you, madam, uh, categorically that one of our uh, uh, sister stations or media outlets, Asase, uh, had you, published on the online that you had you, rescinded you your decision. Say? I can't hear you. Can you come yeah, again? I, I'm saying that you, you, were, you say you didn't know where that information was coming from, and I'm telling you categorically that that information was published by Asase online, uh, suggesting that you had rescinded your decision to go independent. And you're saying that's false? If I resend my decision to write to the EC, have you seen any official letter? And I haven't even sent any letter to my leadership. You can find out from them. Nothing like that has happened. So whoever wrote, they're very bad journalists. Because before you put anything out, at least you have to consult me or ask the leadership, even if I brought any letter, or ask EC if I have sent any letter to them. Nothing like that has happened. So even if that is the short... Hello, madam. Hello? I'm afraid uh, we've lost uh, Madam Cynthia Morrison, uh, but let me just tell you that she has denied categorically that uh, she's rescinded her decision to go independent. Uh, and so that decision still stands, um, contrary to speculations and media reports on other uh, media platforms that she has rescinded her decision to uh, go uh, independent. Uh, away from the new patriotic party. She says that information is false. Uh, we're told she's back on the phone lines. And so you, you're saying that you categorically deny that, that assertion, that you are, you're, you're, going you're not going independent. Ask him whether he has spoken to me or he has seen any letter to that effect. Nothing like that has happened. All so right. That's why he's all over the place. All right, that's fine, madam. But uh, let's just go forward. Um, you know all that has happened in the last... Uh, 48 hours leading up to today's sitting in Parliament. What is your relationship with the leadership of your party? Have they contacted you regarding your decision to go independent? Pardon? So what is the relationship between myself and my leadership? It is between Did yourself... You the relationship between myself and my leadership? Right. We well, are fine. That is why I took pictures with them. We are fine. There's nothing... We don't have any issues. Have you resigned from your party? I have not resigned from the party. So you're still a I member? That point, I have not resigned from the party. I'm so you're still, you are still a member of the party, but you're deciding to go independent? Of course I have. If the party thinks I have aid, I think they would write to me. 
But for now, whoever calls me, I told the person we're going to talk on the issues of the, the speculating pictures and the, whatever is at stake. So if you want me to give you a proper interview, I'll come to the studio. If you I appreciate it. I've just got a, a final question for you. I thank you very much. I do appreciate your time and for agreeing to speak to us. But I've just, I've just got a final question for you. What? Would you reconsider your decision to go independent if your party tells you to do so? I will talk to my party after if you say that. You will not answer that question. I have to talk to my party if you get to that. You will not answer but that I question, will... madam. You will not answer it. Yeah. I have not. I, I have partly answered. I, I just, just asked you a simple question. I said, would you rescind your you know decision? What? Somebody saw a picture and put a story to it. Whatever I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tag you with another story. So when I come to the studio, I'll give you a full briefing. Then I'll be held responsible for everything that I say. I thank you I very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia Morrison, uh, with uh, the New Patriotic Party. But of course, the news tonight is that she's denying uh, allegations or assertions that uh, she has rescinded her decision to go independent. Now, Speaker Alban Bradman's decision to adjourn Parliament indefinitely has deepened the ongoing parliamentary standoff, leaving the legislative body at a crossroad, citing uncertainties surrounding the vacancy controversy and the balance of power. Bradman's ruling halts all parliamentary activities until further notice. Noble Crosby Annan has more on today's happenings in this report. In the early hours of Tuesday, October 22, both sides came prepared. Security in Parliament was unusually heightened, with a conspicuous military presence signalling the gravity of the ongoing standoff between the NPP and the NDC. Parliament was officially scheduled to open its doors at 8 o'clock a.m. Majority Chief Whip Frank and Emperor arrived earlier and was seen inside the chamber well before the appointed time. It's up to the Speaker. The orderliness in the, in, the, in the chamber and the presence of parliament you know, is in the bosom of the speaker. This breach of protocol sparked allegations from the NDC's chief whip, Kwame Abuja Governs, who claimed that Anodon Pre had been smuggled into parliament with the help of the security personnel. Why is Anodon Pre already sitting in there? When we were told that the, the room opens is the, is there, at 8 o'clock, yes. he's already sitting in there. So they are the ones who are going to cause the fight. Yes. In a rare and highly symbolic move, the NDC side of the House, led by their leader, Kaysala Tufosing, occupied the majority side of the chamber for the first time since the infamous chaos during the election of the Speaker. The backdrop to this audacious act? Speaker Alban Bagben's declaration last week that four parliamentary seats were vacant, tilting the balance of power in favour of the NDC. But... With the Supreme Court freezing Bagwin's ruling, the MPP continued to insist they hold the majority, sparking a constitutional tug of war. As the day began, the NPP members of parliament, led by Alexander Pinyomakin, were not prepared to engage in a direct confrontation over the seating arrangement. In a gesture aimed at avoiding chaos, the NPP staged a strategic walkout, retreating to the officers, while their political rivals laid claim to the majority seats. We will not give that lawless platform that NDC is seeking. We will not give them that theater they so aggressively seek. This will disrupt democracy and to destroy our nation. We believe that the appropriate thing is to quietly yield to them and wait upon Mr. Speaker. later, Speaker Alban Bagwin returned to the House, whose presence eagerly awaited as the nation looked to him for clarity on the next steps. Bagwin's tone was measured as he acknowledged that Parliament lacked the numbers to make Biden decisions but could conduct business. I note that we currently have a quorum to transact business. but not to take decisions. Then came his long-awaited direction for proceedings. In view of the current circumstances, the fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of parliament, and having regard to the public interest, 
and the exigencies of the state of affairs in Parliament. I will proceed to, in accordance with Standing Orders 59, adjourn the House indefinitely. That is sine die. The Speaker's ruling, though expected by some rendered both sides unable to proceed with legislative business until a resolution is reached. The weight of his words hung over the now empty chamber like a storm cloud. The bigger question now looms, what happens next? Can the political impasse be resolved without further escalating tensions? And what does this mean for Ghana's democracy as the nation watches closely? Noble Crosbyan in Parliament House, Accra. Meanwhile, the opposition National Democratic Congress and Parliament uh, reacting to the Speaker's adjournment, stress they are still the majority. Leader Dr. Kesla Tuforsen and Tamale South MP Harun Idrisu both affirmed the Speaker's decision as the best possible outcome. And you must describe yourself. Um, some of you, some of you, some of you did. good afternoon. They threaten some of yes. the majority leader. Yes. We want to make something very clear. The NDC members of parliament are in the majority in Ghana's parliament. We've made our position and it's so clear. We are not changing our positions. We see ourselves as the majority. We are fortified by the constitution and the standing orders of this house and we see ourselves as the majority. We are grateful to the right honorable speaker for doing what is right and we respect his decision. We hope that the time will come that this house will be recalled and we take our position as the majority caucus. There is rightly and justifiably what you can call a constitutional uh, stalemate. And I think that the best forum and the best authority to resolve the political tussle is the Supreme Court of Ghana, giving a true and proper interpretation of Article 97 1G and H as is their mandate. We can now speak to a former Deputy Attorney General, Dr. Dominic Ayena, who's joined us. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ayena, for your time. It's been a truly busy day for you, um, following from what transpired on Thursday and on Friday. It appears the National Democratic Congress, on its own, can't do any meaningful business because of the numbers they need. Now, if they are declared majority, how can you, I mean the NDC, Remove the taxes that you want to do away with. Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, as you heard, Mr. Speaker rightly point out when he adjourned the House or prior to adjourning the House, the forum, according to the Constitution, for the conduct of business in Parliament is one third of the members of Parliament. However, the same Constitution also provides the basis for the taking of decisions in Parliament. And he says that a quorum for decision-making is, um, you know, half of the members of Parliament. That is, uh, you know, I mean, 50% uh, of the members of Parliament. And so in the circumstance where uh, today um, we could conduct business, um, I'm sure Mr. Speaker himself would have considered that because we had more than one third of the members of Parliament, uh, that is one third of 271 members of parliament uh, present in the chamber. However, when it came to the issue of decision taking, that is voting in parliament, uh, Mr. Speaker himself could determine, uh, or he determined that we were short of the numbers required to take a decision. Of course, usually business can be uh, conducted in parliament and, there, and then, a, I mean, a, a decision day, in fact, if you take our current standing orders, um, the standing orders provide for what we call decision day. That is a day in which we take decisions on the businesses that have conduct, been conducted by parliament. So, for instance, if a loan agreement is late, um, and, uh, and there are some loan agreements that have been late, um, we definitely can have a debate on the, on the agreement, but to vote on the agreement, you need at least one half of all the members of parliament present. And therefore, um, our side, uh, now the majority with 136 members of, uh, of parliament, uh, can at the appropriate time, when we have all our members present, 
you know, take decisions on measures that have been brought by the government. We can also table our own measures, all right? Legislative measures, uh, you know, and, and, and I mean, related, uh, you know, measures. And then also uh, on the basis of that, you know, take a decision if we, we have 136 in the house. Now you have asked about, you know, what we can do um, when it comes to the legislative measures. For instance, we are the lawmakers. We can pass a bill, but that bill has to be assented to by the President of the Republic. And I have always insisted that once we have the power uh, to make laws, we should make the laws and transmit them, you know, through the appropriate channels to Mr. President. And it, it, it is incumbent upon Mr. President under the Constitution, you know, to take the appropriate action to assent to the bills. If he does not, the Constitution mandates that he brings the bills back to Parliament with an explanation, okay, um, as to why he does not want to pass the bills. Right. All we right. indeed need Parliament to be up and running. Uh, information uh, we're just picking up right now suggests that uh, majority NPs or those on the side of the NPP intend to file a notice tomorrow asking the Speaker to uh, recall the House after he indefinitely adjourned the House today. Um, have you had this and well, what are you going to I, I do about um, it? Well, I don't know the basis upon which you keep insisting that the MPP is in the majority. Well, I just I corrected I, myself. Yeah, Let, let's I not dwell, let's not dwell too much that. on that. Let's not dwell too right. much on that. Okay. Just, yeah. Yes, no, no problem. Yes, but you see, they are the ones who are approbating and reprobating. All right. They decided to walk out on the House instead of staying in the House and making their point to Mr. Speaker. And after Mr. Speaker has adjourned the House, I mean, indefinitely, they are now making an effort to bring us back to the, to the House. Under normal circumstances, when Mr. Speaker adjourns, you know, it should take about 10 days uh, because MPs are uh, required to go back to their constituencies. And especially at this busy hour, a lot of us would have wanted to go back to our constituencies. Now they are making an effort to bring us back. Okay, when MPs go back to their constituencies, it's very costly for them to travel back to Accra to reassemble for the conduct of business. But I am, you know, wondering how different it is going to be when we reconvene, because um, they had thought that, um, you know, circulating the news about uh, the Honorable Cynthia Morrison and then also the Suhum MP uh, will, will, will give the signal to the Ghanaian population that they or the Ghanaian citizens that they are getting back on, into their majority, I mean, a situation. But I just want to sign, I mean, send a signal to them that that is not possible. The reason is that a person whose seat has been declared vacant, a person who has lost his seat, cannot climb back onto that seat by merely writing a letter to the Electoral, electoral Commission. Right. They have to go to an election right. in order to climb back onto that seat. Right. So there is still a constitutional issue to be determined as to whether they want to, I mean, uh, they, 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 I mean uh, um, whether these people can just by word of mouth say that they have joined, been, they, I mean, they have rejoined their parties and they are back in parliament and then they are home and dry. Right. Doctor, yeah, I've, I've got to say a big thank you to you. We don't have much time, but I appreciate thank your time you. thank here you on News thank 360. You. Let's hop onto the phone lines right now also and, and speak to a former Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Ayikwe uh, to Thank you, sir, for your time. I know you've been monitoring all the developments uh, in parliament. Uh, we know the government business has been left in a limbo after today's proceedings. Uh, how can both sides of the House work together for Parliament to be recalled to continue with the business of the House? That's important. That's crucial. Well, now let me go to you that I'm driving to um, try to understand and see whether I got everything. Are you asking how the two sides can work together? That's my question to you, Mr. Ayukwe uh, Okay. Well, we always have had what we call the leadership of the house. And therefore, the leadership in consultation with the uh, speaker can always work out something. Uh, of, <laughs> ordinarily, they would have loved that uh, they do things by consensus. They would have rather always taking a vote where you have a sharp division between minority and uh, uh, majority. So if the leadership can come together, it will be in their own interest. As we have all realized, 
They have very short matters that the government is interested in. I know it's such as their professional skill and all that. So, attending the house on the night would not be in the interest of anybody. So, to me, if they can work out something that is a leadership, uh, that would work for the country and for the South. Mm. That should try. Mm, you, you must give it to your side of the house, the NPP, uh, for for not deciding to enter into the House of Parliament uh, to confront the other side of the House when they had occupied their seats. That obviously for many uh, was a sign of maturity demonstrated by the MPP side of Parliament. What do you say to that? Oh, really? Really? <laughs> we need cool heads, we need uh, some... Um, Maturity to, to, I mean, this mayhem of going to fight as to who sits on the right, who sits on the left, will not yield anything. At the end of the day, you may need somebody to decide. If you recall, uh, when the uh, independent candidate decided to do business with the MPP, it was a sticker. Who determined that in that case, the MPP and them become the majority side. So now, with this matter pending in court, they, you have to decide whether you have to show respect to the court processes or decide that you don't care to hoops and that you want to do your own thing. So I think the speaker did well by deciding to adjust the claim to the die. And the MPP also acted maturely by refusing to go and confront their colleagues who are going to occupy their seats. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Aiko. You can now continue with your driving. We, we appreciate your time here on News 360. In an unexpected turn of events, the Speaker suspended Parliament indefinitely, citing the standing orders of the House and its inability to make a decision based on its current number. Let me now take you through highlights of the Speaker's formal communication to the House today. He said, yesterday I received a process from the Supreme Court, which is a ruling from the Supreme Court pursuant to an ex party application directing Parliament to recognize and allow the four affected MPs to duly represent their constituents and conduct full scope of duties of their offices as members of Parliament pending final determination of a suit filed by Honorable Alexander Apanyomakin. He goes on to say that by Articles 102 and 104 of the Constitution, 1992 and Order 641 of the Standing Orders of Parliament, I note that we currently have a quorum to transact business but not to take decisions. Read Articles 102, 104 of the Constitution and Standing Order 641. Consequently, in view of the current circumstances, the fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of Parliament and having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in Parliament, I will proceed to, in accordance with Standing Orders 59-1, adjourn the House indefinitely. The Speaker, according to the Standing Orders 59-1, 59.1 of the Constitution, the Speaker may, in consultation with the leadership, suspend a meeting of the House indefinitely or for a period determined by the Speaker, having regard to the in public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in the country. Meanwhile, Deputy Chief Whip of the NDC caucus, Ibrahim Ahmed, has disclosed that the Speaker is seeking the intervention of the respective state and civil society institutions in resolving the apparent stalemates in the House. He blames failure to resolve the issues on what he says is an entrenched position taken by the NPP side. How can we in the NDC adhere to an incoming declaration that has not yet been communicated to us? So this was the banter between the two sides of the leadership. So, so, so we couldn't agree. Then the speaker said, if you even in leadership, both NDC and MPP, if you can agree on the way forward here, then you can imagine what your supporters or the other MPs, your colleagues MPs will do. Based on that, I'm going to adjourn the House in India so that the National House of Chiefs, the Peace Council, the religious bodies, the civil society organizations will all come in. 
then we found an amicable solution to the way forward. They took trend position, we also took a trend position. Because you said you are refusing to recognize a standing declaration, but you are urging us to recognize an, a yet to be communicated to the House declaration. In other news, former Auditor General Yao Domelevo has expressed worry over the increased predictability of the Supreme Court in its rulings. Now, reacting to the court's decision to stay execution of Speaker Alban Bagbin's ruling, which declared four parliamentary seats vacant, Yao Domelevo urged the judges to uphold professionalism. My last admonition go to the judiciary, especially the Supreme Court. I would like to admonish them that they should heed to the advice given them by the Minister of National Security. Honorable Kandapa told them that if your interpretation is tilted so much on us all the time, it will create a problem. Obviously, it's creating a problem. And I heard one quote, I don't know how true it is. If it is true, yesterday I read it somewhere that the former Chief Justice, Sophia Kufu, said the Supreme Court is now very predictable. If he actually said it, then I cannot agree more with him. Because most of you knew what the results were going to be before it came. I don't think we need that. We need professionalism. The Attorney General has filed his statement of case in the suit seeking to invoke the original jurisdiction of the courts to declare that the filing of the nomination of three NPP MPs to contest as independent candidates does not amount to vacation of their respective seats. The suit is seeking an order restraining the Speaker of Parliament from pronouncing on any motion in Parliament directed at Andrew Isiama Mwakon, the current MP for Fomina in the Shanti region and second Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Honorable Cynthia Morrison, the current Member of Parliament for Agona West in the Central Region, and Honorable Kojo Asante, the current Member of Parliament for Suhum in the Eastern Region, in the current 8th Parliament. In a statement of case filed at the Supreme Court today, the Attorney General says a Member of Parliament filing nomination to contest a future election does not mean vacation of his or her seat. Rather, if in the current term of Parliament, the MPs leave the party of which he was a member at the time of election to join another party or seek to remain in Parliament as an independent member, then he can be deemed to have vacated his seat. A reminder, still watching News 360, our major news bulletin for the day. We're streaming live on Facebook, also live on your DSTV channel 279. If you feel strongly about any of our uh, subjects this evening, feel free to visit any of our social media pages and post a comment. We promise to share them with the rest of the world. Now, the Ghana Armed Forces has denied allegations that the military was dispatched to Parliament to intimidate MPs and members of the general public. A release issued said the Speaker, Alban Bagman, through the Clerk of Parliament, uh, formally requested for security assistance from the armed forces for routine uh, canine and bomb sweepings of the chamber. Now, the statement said it is a standard procedure usually conducted on the first sitting day of the week, typically on Tuesdays, whenever members of Parliament convene outside the traditional Parliament House the statement further said that military personnel were not present at the ground arena to interfere with parliamentary proceedings, but to exclusively conduct routine sweeps uh, to ensure the safety and security of the facility by checking for any explosive devices or harmful substances. Uh, TV3 has also cited a statement signed by the Deputy Clerk of Parliament requesting the Ghana Armed Forces to provide security assistance for the conduct of parliamentary business from Tuesday, 22nd October, 2024. And away from Parliament, a military tax force has conducted a swoop on the Black Volta around Bamboy in the Bola district of the Savannah region. 31 chamfan machines were burnt completely by the tax force. A pump action gun was also retrieved from a makeshift camp.
Some items belonging to the legal miners were also burnt. The operation was sanctioned by the Savannah Regional Security Council in mining communities along the Black Volta where dozens of illegal miners have taken over the river. A similar operation was carried out by a joint security tax force in September this year where four Chamfan machines were burnt completely. There are an estimated 400 Chamfan machines on the Black Volta River operating illegally. President Tekufado announced punitive measures against illegal mining, popularly known as Galamsi, which includes the use of military and other law enforcement agencies to flush out illegal miners from water bodies and forest reserves. News 360, we're going to go for a break right now. Right, welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. Now, President of the Association of Ghana Industries has expressed concerns over the limited impact of Ghana's policy rate regime on loan costs. Speaking on Business Focus, Dr. Humphrey Ayim Dake highlighted that despite the Bank of Ghana's recent policy rate cuts by 200 basis points to 27%, the first cut since January 2024, interest rates remain regrettably high. Technically, by virtue of the equation I've just described, one will expect that once the inflation is dropping, interest rates. technically the interest rates should drop. But how come the interest rates aren't dropping? So that's the question you've got to ask the Bank of Ghana. That you've dropped it by 200 basis points and per the Fitch effect, technically the interest rate should drop. So what is holding the interest rate up there whilst the uh, inflation is dropping? So there's an abnormality. Somebody got investigated. So as much as we are excited, cost of doing business is still expensive. And therefore, the impact of federal job creation, uh, CAPEX investment to stimulate the economy is still stagnant. And it brings about stagflation. That is why we are suggesting to you that go back to the cost push factors that we enumerated earlier on and tackle them as special interventions. And I'll give you one inter of the intervention. Tackle the two weeks, uh, uh, what you call flotation at the port because it runs through. So that could manage this and make this equation that has been postulated and tried and tested over the period to work. In other news tonight, the wife of Ghana's Vice President, Samira Bamiya, has launched the National Child Online Protection Framework in Accra to protect children across the country from cyber security threats such as cyber bullying and online abuse. This was developed by the Cyber Security Authority in alignment with the initiatives of the International Telecommunications Union and the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF. The Global Online Safety Survey, conducted by Microsoft, reveals that 49% of teenagers worldwide experience medium to severe negative online encounters such as cyberbullying, harassment, and abuse. Wife of the Vice President, Samira Baumia, has observed online protection framework is important considering the increase in cybersecurity threats. We will foster collaboration between government, industry, civil society, and international partners to build a united front against the threats our children face online. Director General of the CSA, Dr. Albert Entribuesi, in an interview, warned of strict sanctions against culprits, including seven jail terms. Soliciting intimate images or videos of children and using that to blackmail them is also uh, an offense under the sextortion principle. Perpetrators can go to jail, in some cases, a minimum of about two years, but it can be as long as it ten years. Meanwhile, the CSA held the grand finale of the 2024 National Cyber Security Challenge under the theme Empowering Young Minds, Creating Opportunities, Promoting a Safer Digital Ghana. The contest saw St. Peter's Senior High School emerge overall winners. You're still watching News 360. The Ghana Export Promotion Authority says it is committed to supporting innovation in the coconut sector by providing platforms for capacity building, research and technological advancement. In a keynote address at the 2024 Ghana Coconut Festival in Accra, the Chief Executive Officer Asafohene Dr. Ifua Asabi Asari I stressed the move aims to ensure that Ghanaian coconut products remain competitive and sustainable globally. 
The coconut industry has the potential to create thousands of sustainable jobs. Against this backdrop, the Ghana Export Promotion Authority has distributed over 1 million seedlings covering over 15,000 acres. This has generated about 350,000 employment opportunities, particularly for women and youth within the Cocoa Valley chain. The future of the coconut industry lies in sustainability. We must ensure that the growth of the industry benefits everyone, from the farmers cultivating the crops to the consumers who enjoy the final products. Promoting environmentally friendly practices, ethical sourcing and fair trade will ensure the long-term success of the industry while protecting our own environment and enhancing the livelihoods of all of us who are involved. And that's all for the very latest in the world of business. For more business news stories, do also visit our website. It's www.3news.com. That's all for business. We've got sports coming up. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Oreku Ampofo. Founded in 2012, Young Apostles spent 12 years in the second and first divisions in Ghana football before achieving promotion uh, to the Elite League just four months ago. This milestone comes after a dramatic penalty shootout victory against Techiman Heroes, ending 4 3 during the Zone 1 playoff in Accra. My colleague Imano Ousu explores the community and how they've been embracing the top flight football that has recently been introduced to Wenchi. Wenchi, located in Ghana's Bono region, serves as the capital of Wenchi Municipal. While farming is a primary source of income for its residents, the town has a rich sporting culture and has produced notable footballers such as Asamwe Jan, Bafo Jan and Felix Afenejan. However, the community had long awaited their debut in the Ghana Premier League. On October 13, 2024, the town hosted league giant Hakra Hearts of Folk. By 7 a.m., excitement filled the air as drivers, business owners, elders and children proudly displayed Young Apostles flags. Community members shared their enthusiasm about the Premier League's arrival in Wenchi. We are not even just happy that uh, we are playing, but for the fact that Wenchi's name will be mentioned across the country, that we are also in the Premier League, it's a kind of, um, it gives us so much joy, so much happiness. Enim Ado, the club's president, envisions transforming young apostles into a community-owned club where fans have a greater say. Life in premiership is hell because the cost of running premiership is way, 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 way. It's like three, four times or five times of what you used to run a Division One club. It's not easy. And so that's what I've told you that our long, long, long term plan is to involve the community. Despite facing early challenges in the league, head coach Asari Bediako remains determined to secure their Premier League status and is appealing for support from the Wenchi community. Yes, make sure that Apostles, we, we maintain our position in the Premier League. Young Apostles are the fifth team from Bono Ahafo to be promoted to the Ghana Premier League. Currently sitting at 16th in the standings with just one win from seven matches played, they must work hard to maintain the joy and passion of Wenchi's football fans. Okay, so now let's now get the latest scores from the UEFA Champions League uh, matches, which is currently being played. Uh, Monaco did play earlier today, and uh, they currently sit top of the league phase. Remember, there's a new phase uh, for the Champions League. Milan also beating Club Brugge by three goals to one. Club Brugge had to play a whole half uh, with 10 men after Onyadike received a red card in the first half. Arsenal also playing right now, lead by one goal to nil. Sporting leading Stormgrass by one goal to nil. And then the most shocking result so far, Borussia Dortmund leading Real Madrid in the game at the Bernabeu, uh, which is a halftime, uh, is the repeat of last year's Champions League final. 
Well, before we go, Mohamed Kudus, West Ham and Tottenham have been charged by the Football Association following Saturday's Premier League match. Kudus, who already has a three-match ban, could be out for longer following the charge uh, that has been imposed by the Football Association. And that's how we'll be wrapping up the sports segment here on News 360. My name is Ray Kuampofo. Up next on the bulletin is Entertainment with Anita Kufu. Welcome to the Entertainment News segment. My name is Anita Ikia Ikufu. And Tamale Senior High School and Laboni Senior High School have secured their spots in the final stage of the ongoing culinary contest, Kitchen Wars. The schools triumphed over tough competitors, Ghana Senior High School and defending champions, Achimota Senior High School, in the semifinal. This week, four schools showcased their culinary skills in a bid to advance to the finals of the ongoing competition. In a thrilling battle of flavors, contestants prepared unique dishes that kept everyone on the edge of their seats. How's it going? It's all right. It's okay. I see one, two... Things boiling on fire. Yes. And so something today might... we decided to do some fried rice, and we've taken you back memory lane to our Ghanaian homes, where we're okay. pre uh, preparing a very conservative meal that we all know here in Ghana, mm -hmm. known as uh, yam porridge or yep. potom poto. Okay. The event was not just about competition; it celebrated culinary art, teamwork, and school spirit. Now. <laughs> okay, at least it's a signal that it was good. No, but don't worry. Judges praised their contestants for their creativity and skills, making for a memorable showdown. Tamasco! Tamasco! Congratulations, Tamasco! That leaves us with one more school to qualify to the grand finale. Shall we welcome? Laboni. Tamale Senior High School and Laboni Senior High Schools have already secured their spots in the finals, with two more schools set to compete for the final spot. As the excitement builds, the final promises to be even more electrifying, with all teams eager to claim the title. And still in entertainment, Ghanaian high life and Afrobeat artist Kwame Eugene has refuted rumors that he has departed Lynx Entertainment. Um, in an interview with Andy Dosti, he stated that all of the details surrounding his departure from the label are hearsay. That's all for the entertainment news segment. My name is Anita Ikia Ikufu. Have a good evening. Thank you so much, Anita. For more news updates, do log on to our website, 3news.com. My name is Boshia Gabo. And my name is Parkwis Yasari.